We are impending doom and you're watching Metal Cross TV. This is Chris with Metal Cross. We're here today with Impending Doom doing a face-to-face -face interview. Guys, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, Brooke, I do the vocals. David, bass. So, what brought about the, the name Impending Doom? Where did that come from? Um, uh, uh, I was just uh, thinking of names, and I had a bunch of stupid names, because I was into like really this, uh, like surgical sort of just uh, brutal names or whatever but then I was like I don't think that's going to like it's not appealing that just sounds like eh you know <laughs> it's mediocre uh, so I just I thought of the word doom and I I don't know I, I something had to be before it or after it so I was like thinking of words and I, it had to be a god thing because I, I didn't even know what impending meant until a couple of years ago. <laughs> so I don't, I think I saw something, maybe, I don't know. And uh, yeah, just like everything else I make up in this band, <laughs> it's kind of just made it up and then I found out later, it's like, wow, this is like a pretty freaking cool name. I love the name. Awesome. Is it, is it, does it have to do with uh, like an impending doom? Yeah, that's what I, and then that's, and then and that's that. what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like I was just like, uh, impending. I right, was thinking right. something along those lines and I, and it just, what I really meant to say is like, it didn't quite hit me. Like, this is such a cool name until later. Like, I was just like, impending doom. It sounds cool. It kind of flows a little bit. I like it. And then as I like started, we were playing shows and connecting with kids and, and uh, really like defining our sound and what we're doing in this scene, it was kind of just like, wow, it's like, yeah, like it's like people, I never really say that much in interviews about like, you know, impending, you know, your dooms and impending. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Without yeah. Christ. It's kind of just kind of, I guess people just kind of get, get that because I get that a lot. Like, is that what it means? And I go, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, so. I'm just really stoked on it, and that's kind of what I was thinking about it, but it, I didn't get the full like impact of the name until just uh, in the world that we're living in. It's just a whole bunch of just wow. It's such a it was such a cool name that I didn't even really think of. That's why I was like saying God just gave me some sort of inspiration because I was just like it's a cool name. I like it, and then years later I really like get the gist of like wow, it really is like an impactful name. So. Now the band symbol I have heard is. Uh called a repentagram. Yeah. Okay, now, where, where, what's, that all, that, up what's that all about? Made that up. All things that came out of Brooke's mind. <clears throat> and they all happen when he's just like laying there asleep <laughs> in the middle of like, where, you know, Walmart it was, it, sleeping it was, on old... It was 4 a.m. in Walmart. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> I was sitting on, not this bench, but I was sitting in the front row, just, I think I fell asleep listening to like a metal band. And I fell asleep listening to them. And I was just, but I wasn't asleep, you know that like, you're half awake, half asleep phase, but I was too lazy to take the headphones off. And I was listening and I just thought, pentagram, pentagram. And it, it's so simple, I was just like, repent, repent. Repentagram. <laughs> and then I think David, he, like he was, yelled at yeah, girls. David was sitting right here and he like stood up and I said it. And I didn't think anything was going to happen to it, I just said the word. I don't know, I don't know, I don't think I texted our manager or anybody, but like, it seems like a few days later there's like the symbol made for the idea that I had and what it is uh, and this is like another thing that kind of in God God inspired I kind of came up with it and then I didn't realize the uh, there's nine points on it and uh, there's nine fruits of the spirit and so each point is a fruit of the spirit and then I, I again didn't think anything of it. I thought, oh, it's cool. It's cool. Though. Like something, some people can grab onto it, kind of relate to it. A lot of kids told me that when you know they buy the shirts or whatever with that on it, you know, Christian people are like, 
what is that? Say, you know, Satanic. thinking it's like a witchcraft or something. Right. You know, there's Christian Go people ahead. get freaked out. You know, <laughs> they're just so just yeah, everything's scared. <laughs> it's a Christian. I, I don't know why, but but kids are telling me yeah, it's just a great like witness. They're like, what is that? And they're like, oh, actually, it's this. And I mean, awesome. and and an open mind, not a not an open mind Christian, not a not a compromising Christian, but a Christian that's like, well, you know, try to understand something is the kind of Christians that I think are going to do way more uh, things for the kingdom than this one that's just like, no, I don't get it. Get it away. So, uh, so a couple of kids, they use it as like a little witness tool. Just like, you know, we play we play a lot with a lot of secular bands and uh, and it's kind of sort of like a way to uh, in, engage in a conversation. Like, oh, you like this band? Oh, yeah, they got this thing, I'm Christian. Blah, blah, blah. That kind of leads me to the next question, too. When you guys come across, let's say, more conservative people that might say, well, your your music isn't Christian music. It's not glorifying God. I mean, yeah. how, how do you normally respond to somebody who, who would say something? Well, what is music that glorifies God? Like, this is written down mm -hmm. somewhere that it is, like, this is what it is. Anything else is not... Like no, you, you like, wouldn't even believe the stories I've heard that guys that you would think you know that are you know radio rock you know I'm those guys are what I would question a lot I, I don't I think they go under the radar because they're singing you know praise worship you know when you're getting that much attention popularity money it, it it's it's hard for any person to keep a humble like you start believing in your own hype when you get to that oh, look at we're in we're in a van like and that's a thing too is like when I started it's like I love heavy music yeah I listen to worship bands all the time uh, I'm not going against them but I'm just that it's hard for any human to get that much adoration money and not think of themselves like maybe I am great maybe it is me you know, and I, I see, a, I've seen a lot of that and even bands that are bigger than us, but are Christian, it's, it happened. And a lot of times, like, what I've done is we'll play a few songs in and then I'll start like, so we get people to like, you know, people that don't know we're Christian right. are just like, yes, they're crushing, they're killing it. And then there's like, we love Jesus. I still like you, but I don't want to. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you, oh, you guys, that's a good one. <laughs> You're not gonna go up to a kid and be like, oh, you're wearing that uh, demonic shirt or you're wearing that that non-Christian, whatever. And you think that kid's just gonna be like, you are totally right. I should not be wearing this. It's just like, no, it's if, if you're if you're not having like compassion and love and and being real and just kind of right. understanding people right. and you're just out there throwing your your con condemnation on people, and you're not gonna do any good anyway. So I just be like, you just you should just go and going to live in a bubble. I, I mean, I imagine there's got to be some, like, spiritual warfare going on, too. You know, I mean... Uh, I feel it. That, I, I mean, is there... Has there been an instance that you guys can recall uh, where you just kind of felt like, you know what, here we are, we're speaking for the Lord, and, and, and Satan is just hammering on. Oh, all the time. Demons. So, uh, tell me about... Tell me about one situation that uh, where you guys felt like you were just basically being and <laughs> I, I feel it all the time when I go on stage or just someplace where I'm just like, yes. I haven't been out in there to see the crowd or anything, you know, just in here or wherever. Um, but then, the, and I just, you know, but there's sometimes I'm just like, I walk on stage like, yeah, I feel like I'm feeling good. Uh, but there are a bunch of times I go on stage I'm just like, I do not feel like being here. Like, I feel like, I, like, just like, like just hearing a bunch of get off the you suck, you're no good, get off the stage. Hear that all the time, I'm just like, this isn't right, this isn't right. And I just like, say a, I say a prayer and I just, I pray until it's just like, this is where I'm supposed to be right now. And uh, yeah, this, because because the, there is so much, because at our shows, there there's Christian kids and then there's non-Christian kids, uh, you know. And it's like, it, 
you know, Christian kids. They're just, I'm Christian, you know, just like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a Christian kid. <laughs> I want everybody to know that. And then those, you know, those kids that aren't Christian are like, I'm not Christian. You know that. And there's like, that's, that. there's a spirit in there that's fighting for, you know, for dominance over a place. And uh, so I just... I speak out, I speak out, Jesus, 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 and I, and I pray, and I just, until that, that oppression is just off me, and then when it's off me, I could sort of just, just hammer it on, on the crowd, and just like, claim, you know, favor and dominance over this place, wherever I'm at, and I feel it all the time, man, I feel like, like the other day, I had my friend pray over me in uh, Utah, I just didn't want to even play, and I wasn't feeling it. And it wasn't because anything else. Like it sounded cool, kids were cool. And I just had my friend pray over me before we played. And uh, it's seriously just like, like, he just ripped off a huge weighted jacket off me. It was weird. And uh, I was glad he was there. Dave, what about you? Any situations that felt like you were in a spiritual battle, basically? Uh, I mean, we kind of all are, we can all feel it like the. Like how he was saying when, just like not a. We've we've had gone on stage so many times where it's just like, this just doesn't. There's something like in the room, weird vibe. Like the, you know, the crowd could go nuts or just even worse, be standing there, and it just is like, you know, it's you got to get past that. It's really hard to kind of pull the positive, you know, vibe out of that. But, uh, you know, we've, like you said, we've toured, we've only done like three or four Christian tours. Like every tour we've done for eight years is just like secular tours. And, you know, usually, you know, we've toured with, played shows and toured with like the most evil bands as, you know, people see them. And, you know, they're, everyone's always been, you know, kind and understanding to our beliefs with us. Awesome. So it's really just like, kind of feel like the room needs like a, to be blessed <laughs> sometimes like you just walk in and it's just heavy yeah thick yeah Rick how did you uh, come into the Lord I mean what was that kind of like is it um I went to I went to church a few times when I was like a kid and typical I didn't want to go um but as I got older I got into the partying and uh drinking all the time and and uh just feeling guilty all the time it's like a guilt like I don't I, I just I didn't I didn't like it uh, and uh, you know long story short uh, got into the scene went to shows met Christian dudes like hard Christian you know chatted from just like just like they're not your typical just like hey guys <laughs> you know super sweet Christian guys that they're like <laughs> They're, they're just hard dudes, you know, they're nice to you, but if you want to step on them with their toes, you know, they'll, they'll knock you off yours, you know. <laughs> but they're just sweet dudes who just knew the Lord, loved the Lord, and got to know them and hang out with them, and and I really liked heavy music, because so I was like, and but I was still partying, so my I was like one foot in the world, one foot, you know, reading, and not, not even reading, just kind of just going to church sometimes and feeling like, wow, this is like, Preachers preaching, feeling the words, hit me hard. You know, I was one of those guys that would go to church every Sunday and, you know, walk up and give my life to the Lord every Sunday, you know, because that whole week I was just shot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I was like, this this is not right, because, you know, I'd go to church more and then they just like, you know, the pastor obviously giving that lukewarm service. And I was just like, I can't do this anymore. So what I did was I started a started band to sort of whenever my friends called, I'm at band practice. I'm at so it kind of broke me away because it was like friends called, yeah, pick me up. But now it's just like friends called, oh, I'm at band practice, or I'm getting ready to do a show. This that. So it kind of just and then eventually started touring. So then it was like months have gone by where uh, I just be reading and reading and get deeper and deeper and deeper, and uh, and that's kind of how I broke away from living, you know, like that and just feeling that that shame and. All that nastiness, and so, and then I started uh, 
drinking tons of coffee and reading the word. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't get the spirit unless you got, you know, <laughs> the strongest <laughs> cup of java in your head. I, I, it's really bitter, and I started drinking, I was like, oh my gosh. And uh, I was like, this is like a crazy coffee, and I know we're in Portland, so it's just like super, like, whatever, you know. And uh, I asked the guy, because when I got the coffee, and then I got the donuts, I said, well, what kind of coffee is this? He's like, well, it's, you know, he got into the science of it. But basically, he said it's liquid crack, and I was like, yeah, I'm feeling it right now. <laughs> and uh, it's good, I'm into it. But, um, but yeah, I just thought it, you know, actually, like, having times, like, like it. I'm not doing anything. So I just read, I just read a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Wrote albums, wrote albums, wrote albums. Read, 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 and then all of a sudden I'm just like, I don't even care to do that stuff anymore. At all. Like, weird how it just changes your heart like that. Just reading and just realizing this is like so much more just uh, fulfilling than doing anything like that. And it's just like, uh, that's basically what I come to show to do and just telling people like, I know you're not fulfilled. I know this is not, you know, metal or whatever. Music is not fulfilling. It's a cool thing, but it's not like, it's not going to bring you any sort of salvation or true fullness in your life. And that's basically what I did, try to tell people. Because I just think I kind of lived it out myself in the last 10 years. So, so yeah, that's how I basically got to know it. David, how about you? How do you come out? Uh, kind of the same thing, except I went to, I always went to church with my family growing up there. I was kind of just forced, have to always go, so, um, but when I got a little older and I was able to make the decision on my own, um, it was just kind of like, yeah, I mean, I used to party in high school too, so kind of switching from, uh, cause I started playing music when I was like 12 or 13, so when I got my first bass, so I played in like, a little like pop punk band uh, that I would like play at my church and stuff like that. I really like music, but I would have like, you know, I'd, none of my friends that I grew up with, uh, when I started like my first band, they were all like, oh yeah, music, let's start a band. Like, that's cool, we're 13. And then I was the only one that kind of like stuck with it. Everybody else kind of was like, oh, okay, yeah, like a year later, this is stupid. And then, you know, they'd go off to high school and, you know, party with them and stuff like that. But I loved playing music. So then I started hanging out with like people like Brooke and going to shows, same people, stuff like that. And it, it was just, you know, got into that scene a whole lot and kind of took me away from this and that. And, you know, I, I'm, I have a really addictive personality. So when I like do one thing, I usually do it like all out. And that's, you know, I gotta go for it. So that's why I was like, out of all my friends, the person, you know, who would, take you know music and do this as far it would be me because I just once I want something I try to see it all the way through so I was just constantly hanging out with you know different people and um, yeah like you know we started touring and playing shows and always you know we don't have anything to do always talking with each other and reading and stuff like that so it's definitely you know the band and when I got old enough to you know kind of separate from oh I have to go to church today I have to do this because you know parents <laughs> <laughs> right but Absolutely. I mean it, it was definitely good that my, my parents did all that you know but it for sure like you know my first like 14 15 16 years of going to church it was just a place to go that I had to go so it's, you know and I think that's you know it's really hard to get any you know kid or a teenager to you know you, you put them through church that's good and everything but they're gonna have to make the, you know their decision when they you know can obviously putting them through church your entire life helps <laughs> but um good yeah 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 that's what happened yeah now i noticed on your your music obviously is very very raw very very hardcore yeah and that's uh personally me i, I love it so right <laughs> so i'm all yeah. about that um and I notice a lot of your songs that you write, they're about, um, uh, let's say, the Antichrist, destruction of the Antichrist, or hypocritical Christians uh, yeah. along those lines, yeah. um, and, and basically standing up for the faith, almost like a, 
in a matter of just getting there yeah. and just staying with it and yeah, yeah. marching on and continuing on. Perfect, yeah. And um, is it just something that you just feel it comes on you and that's what you write? And that's, yeah, that's the one. Okay, so it's more it's more like almost like what the Lord is putting on your heart to write. And exactly. I, it's, yeah, it's just, it's um, with me writing lyrics and stuff, it's um, just what I see and then I try to, uh, what I do is what I see traveling and just in my own personal life and what people are, what like you know secular bands, what they're writing about, what they're talking about, and I and I listen to it, and I and I try to understand it, and then I and then I use the Bible to sort of, okay, this is what they're talking about. This is like their concern. They have a big following. Let me address that. So maybe a metalhead that listens to them, that listens to us, we like. I like his, I like the Benny Dooms like version better. And then, and we, we, we're all on the same page with, and that's kind of cool about our band that I really like is like, none of us is like, well, I want to play like this. And I don't know, but I want to do this. And it's just like, no, we're all pretty much heavy. Dark. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do, we're all on the same page. It's like we love those kind of tones and, and that presence, you know. Uh, I don't know. Just we we're all just we all just love that style of music yeah. um, more than anything. It's weird. It's weird that we're all just like that. It's just like if one if if someone writes like a happier riff, or we all look at him like, and he'll even look at himself like. Yeah, it's kind of there's faces. <laughs> there's faces yeah. to make. Yeah. If, if, yeah, if someone plays a riff and we're just like, like that face, it's not good. But basically, it's just if the if the riff makes you go like that, we yeah. keep that one. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we we pretty much we don't. There's no like, oh, we need to have that kind of part or this. It's not real. It's not, it, it is to an extent like a little bit of structure, but it's just like if it gives that vibe, you know, we're just like, yeah, I'm like that. So overall, if you were to kind of sum it all up in what impending doom, what is the message of impending doom? What would you say it would be? The message of impending doom. Um, I would just say uh, being real with God. So many people in the scene, or so many people, so many Christians, so many young Christians, so many people like our age, um, feel like they have to put on some sort of front. Feel like they have to like be a certain type of person and change. Like, stop. That's so just elementary. Like, that's not what God. God. God's not looking at that shirt. You know, He's not looking. He's looking at your heart. He's looking at how you treat others, how you're loving others, how uh, how you're giving him glory and not yourself, you know. And it's just like when we kind of go back to the fundamentals of stuff and just break off that that whole religious sort of attitude of just you got to follow the ten steps, you got to follow those this program, and then you can go to heaven, and then you can teach people about Jesus. It's just like no man, like. What I want to do is just want to break those chains off. That's Satan. Those are, those are lies. And I just want to tell kids, it's like, come to Jesus. The rest will just come. Like like all of us that are saved, it's just like, we all brought our baggage. And, you, and like like I said earlier, you know, I was drinking. I was doing that. I was just living a life of nothing. And I just started reading. I started getting more into church. started playing more. Started, and I just like, God just went. You don't need that anymore, do you? No. And he's like, okay. Now you tell people about that. Tell people what I did know. And that's basically what I do. That's our message is like, just be real. Stop stop trying to live this. And it's so easy to be fake nowadays with the internet. So it's like, just stop being fake. Be real with God. And and it'll 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 change your life. Just be like, God, I got this. I got this problem. I got this or whatever. God sees it anyways. Might as well just acknowledge it and just say, God, take this away. 
And that's basically what I want to do is like when kids come up to me and they want to get super theological or something like it's impressing me or I don't know what it is, but it's just like, well, when's the last time you read your Bible? Oh, I don't do that really. Or right, when's the last time you pray? Oh, no, I don't have to. I'm just like, well, those are two basic fundamental things you need to just stop like getting into the criticizing aspect and just get to the heart and get to get get in relationship with Jesus. Done. You know, nothing, I'm not gonna, you're wearing a, you're wearing your satanic shirts, you're drinking your booze, you're smoking a freaking fat blunt right outside my van. That's secondary. Let's get you to know Jesus and then that stuff will just, I'm not gonna be like, hey, you're smoking weed and doing that. That's bad. While, you know, I'm a sinner as well. And then, so, that's not my, my main concern. My main concern is, you know you're loved. You know Jesus, he loves you. Ah, oh, F that. Okay, just letting you know. Have a good day, man. Basically what I try to do, I don't try to look at that, that, that other crap, you know. I don't condone it. I don't say, you know, be an alcoholic, you know, but I'm not going to. The matter of heart is you need to know Jesus. Other than, other than you know what, this flesh is going to die. Where's your spirit going? So that's what I want to say. That's my, that's my, I guess I wasn't too quick, but. <laughs> that's that's, that's awesome. awesome. Right on. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thank you guys. I appreciate your time. Yeah, man. No. David, thank you so much. Thanks, appreciate man. it. You bet. Thanks. I know we're a Christian band. I know that goes against everything every metalhead has ever heard. I'm going to tell you, there's no condemnation here, man. We love you. We appreciate you no matter what you believe in. Honestly, I'm at the merch table. I'm at the merch table. I just come up here. I share my beliefs. I love you guys so very much.